Hey guys, Stevie Super. So I made this video the other day about the free standalone application of Particle Illusion, which is a particle generator made by Boris FX. Now there is obviously a paid version, which is a plugin. I don't have that and I've never used it, but I was looking at some of the features that were missing and there was one feature in particular that I'm really not excited about. So let's go ahead and jump really quickly over to the standalone versus the plugin comparison. Uh, let's go ahead and just scroll down here a little bit. And there's this one right here that I feel like we really should have had and that's the direct compositing on source but I started thinking about one of the tutorial videos that are actually on the Boris FX website and it said you can actually make your own custom emitters and you can bring in your own custom shapes so that got me thinking why can't we just bring in a picture and turn that into a particle and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now all right so I'm gonna go ahead and take this coffee footage and I'm gonna jump directly over to fusion now I can't bring the footage over, but I can bring one specific image. So let me go ahead and right click on my viewer, come down to save image, and I'm just going to type in sitting, click JPEG, hit save, and I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Obviously I've already done this at least once. And I'm just gonna jump directly over to Particle Illusion. I'm gonna show you how to make a custom emitter that will allow us to look at our video footage. So I'm gonna type in the word basic and I'm gonna come down to this basic emitter. I'm gonna double click on that basic emitter and right away, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna rename it. And I'm just gonna type in plate and hit enter. And then down here where it says new particle type, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one and I'm gonna rename that as well. And I'm just gonna type in image. And just below that image twirl down, I'm gonna twirl down where it says properties and I'm gonna come over to shape image. And then over to the right, there's that little black square with a sprite inside of it. I want to change that sprite. So just left click on that and then come over to import shape. Come to your desktop, wherever your image is, which mine is sitting. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. And you'll notice that it brings it in as a grayscale image with some kind of transparency already built in. We don't want that. We actually just want the full color image. And where it says scale image two, I'm just gonna scale it all the way up to 20 2048 and hit apply. Now we can go ahead and hit apply once more. And now we've loaded that in as our sprite. Of course, we don't really see much. In fact, if I hit play, you'll notice that you can kind of see something taking place in there, but it doesn't really look like too much. So let's go ahead and crank the size up a little bit. Well, now we're definitely seeing something. And if I hit play, you'll notice there's still like a little bit of jitter. So the thing that's causing that jitter, and it's real weird, but it's actually this velocity. Let's go ahead and turn the velocity all the way down. And now you'll notice that it's a static image. So let's come over to the very beginning. And I don't like how it slowly comes on there. Just come over here to the properties on the plate, twirl that down and right where it says frames to preload, just go ahead and turn that up. And now it'll be preloaded. We won't have to wait for it to reach its full brightness. And now we can just come in here and we can play with the size until it's the exact size of our 1920 by 1080 comp. And that looks pretty good right there. So there's our plate. Now we have imported a image, turned it into a sprite. We removed certain aspects so that it wouldn't move around and we made it larger so that we could actually see it. So now let's go ahead and just create a custom emitter and save that to our library. So back to the hamburger menu we go, left click, come down to save to emitter library and just name it whatever you want and then save it to your custom library. Now I've already done this like three times so I'm not gonna do it again, but all you have to do is hit save and that's going to save it to the destination which is your default custom library. Now there is a video on Boris FX if you wanna learn how to make new custom libraries, you can do that. I haven't done it, but it's an option. And then you will have to exit out of the program and then come back into the program in order for it to actually be inside of your custom library. So the nice thing about this though is now we can actually come in here and let's say we wanna type in Meteor. I'm gonna double click on this Meteor. If I hit play, you'll see, okay, the Meteor is there and it's composited on top of our footage or not our footage, it's really just an image. Now I can place this exactly where it needs to be. I'm just gonna come to the very beginning of this footage and I'm going to take that meteor emitter and I'm just gonna take it out of screen. Now, instead of animating that meteor with these keyframes down here, I'm actually gonna come up to the position X, Y and I'm going to left click on this keyframe spot right here. And that is going to allow me to change it to either linear or Bezier. I'm gonna change it to linear and then I'm going to come forward to the 30 frame mark and I'm just going to drop it directly into that cup. Now, if I just play that back, we can see that a meteor falls right into her cup. Obviously, it's going to scorch her hand a little bit, and we're going to have to mask some of this out, but we'll do that in our compositing program. 
the nice thing about doing it this way is I can actually, let's say I wanna move this meteor over this way and I know that I need to composite out her head or I can move it around just enough, it will not affect anything else that it would be a little bit harder to rotoscope out later. You can bring in several effects and as long as they're on top of your plate, you're fine. So Particle Illusion works with layers just as After Effects or Premiere or even the edit page inside of DaVinci works on a layer system. So the plate would be the background layer and then everything above it will be above that background plate. Now let's say that this is exactly the way that we want our effect. Before I render it out, I'm gonna take this plate and I'm just gonna delete it because I don't need that. I only needed to know exactly how I wanted to set up my animation. So now I can come over to the render and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the render button. I'm gonna call this test test because I've done this so many times I don't remember what I've actually called these and I'm gonna come down to the straight alpha option. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit render and I'm actually just gonna jump straight over to DaVinci Resolve because I don't really need to wait for it to render. I can just sit here and just be ready for it. All right, so that horrible sound lets us know that it is done. Let's go ahead and right click import media and I'm gonna bring in test test. Now all I gotta do is bring it over here. Now the easiest way to integrate this into this footage is to just grab the output of that new meteor and drop it onto the output of my background plate. So I don't really see anything right now and that's because if you remember the actual effect took place very early on. In fact, it was in the first 30 frames. I actually need to decide what frame I want this to take place at. So let's say that I want my effect to start taking place at frame 300. I need to come into the media in and I'm just going to use this hold first frame. I'm gonna go ahead and double click and type in 300. All right, now if I play from 300, you'll see that the effect now comes down and it blasts into the cup. And you'll notice that it is perfectly lined up with the original background plate, which is also lined up with this plate. Now we might have to tweak some animation and we may have to uh, move it around or even track it. Obviously I picked this footage because she doesn't move almost at all. So it really is the easiest type of footage in order to use. She, she moves so little throughout this entire footage that I don't have to track anything or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this media and I'm just gonna do a really quick mask there is a lid on the cup, but you know, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and do a really simple mask. And I'm just going to do an inclusive mask instead of inverting it. So now it's all connected up and there you have it. Perfectly masked out. She doesn't move. That's great. And just like magic, we just put a meteor into her coffee cup. And the nice thing about this is, let's say you want to bring in different footage. So let me go ahead and just delete this real quick. And I'm gonna grab this drone footage and then jump back over to Fusion. I'm just gonna go ahead and save this image out real quick. I'm gonna come over to Save Image, type in City, come down to JPEG and hit Save. All right, now let's go ahead and jump back over to Particle Illusion. And in the search emitters, I'm just gonna type in Plate and bring in my BG Plate Emitter. So it brings it in with the original image that we used to save to our custom emitter folder. So I'm just going to come down to the very bottom where it says new particle type. I'm going to come back down into properties and I'm going to change out the image or the shape image and I'm going to import a new shape. And I'm going to go to my city JPEG. I'm going to double click that and change it to full color. Again, scale the image all the way up and hit apply and apply. And you'll notice that now we have our image. It's already done. So you can do this with any image. So we're definitely doing a workaround. And again, it's not ideal. It would be great if you could do this natively and just jump back and forth. But this is kind of what we have to deal with if we want to use the free version of Particle Illusion. All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you guys got something out of this. It is a pretty cool little tip, and I hope you guys get a little bit of use out of it. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.